Hello friends, welcome back to my video. Today it is time for a bookshelf tour. I haven't done one since 2022, so I figured it was time to do one and I wanted to do one before I move out. So I'm hopefully gonna be moving out sometime this year. It may end up being next year, who knows? Moving takes time. But um, I'm gonna be moving out soon, beginning the process soon of moving out or looking for a new place or my own place. This isn't, a, this is my family home. <laughs> Me and Tom are looking to buy a place pretty soon. So I wanted to do a bookshelf tour of the books as they were here because I'll probably have a whole different setup. Hopefully a lot more bookshelves, which we'll get into in a second. So I wanted to like immortalize them as they are one final time. And when I was getting ready to film this video, I was feeling a lot of like anxiety, right? And I was like, okay, Megan, let's drill down into why we've got anxiety. And it's because I was planning to film like a look at my gorgeous bookshelves video and look how aesthetic they are and look how like amazing my bookshelves are and i realized i'm feeling anxiety because i don't feel like that this is a hell of pure chaos i'm ready to cause absolute havoc there are no more room for books no more room for books absolutely no room for books when i finish the book i'm currently reading do i know where that's going no i actually have some serious cosmetic surgery to just fit one book in like it's it took me half an hour to fit all my books for the last month. <laughs> Dear. There's so many books like double stacked behind here that I've probably forgotten about. It's a mess. It's it's a, it's an absolute mess. I have no more room for any more bookshelves in my room. And so until I move out, um, where are the books going? Who knows? So this is going to be more chaotic instead. <laughs> I've decided because I'm just feeling like, oh, I'm, they stress me out at the moment because I have no idea where the books are going. So I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour. I, it haven't changed a lot since my 2022 one. So I'm going to try not to repeat myself. I haven't really changed the layout at all. So we'll just run through them, run through some of the key books in them and yes, immortalize these shelves one last time <laughs> before. Hopefully I'm planning on having bookshelves in different rooms you know like maybe a non-fiction part in the living room or maybe like special editions or do you know what i mean wishful thinking yeah you're a dreamer you dream a lot in your no. i'm planning on like breaking it up a little bit when we move out so shall we just get into it i'm gonna take you through how i organize my shelves i organize them by genre but then it's a free-for-all basically series often aren't together <laughs> Well, no, I will shelf series together always unless there's a reason I don't want them to be together, which we'll get into. So shall we just begin? We will start with the fantasy, magical realism, sci-fi shelf and just go from there, I guess. <laughs> Okie dokie. So this shelf is pretty much almost entirely the same as last time I showed it, just with a few different books in there. This is the first fantasy shelf and this is all paperback, so I like them to all be like like the same level. <laughs> so this is all our paperbacks. I don't think there's been many added since the last time we got here. We've got some really good series. We've got like the Bardugo series. We've got the Greenbone Saga. Someone asked me in a video the other day why Scythe and the Toll are here but Thunderhead isn't. Thunderhead is like, how many shelves down? Where even is Thunderhead? Oh, it's like four shelves down <laughs> because it's not a paperback. I don't know. I have a hard cover of that one and it would break the flow. So <laughs> maybe when I change my shelves one day, they will be together because I'll put other books in this shelf. But yeah, for now, um, that's that shelf. I don't think it's very interesting. See, here's the problem, guys. <laughs> how close is that? What do I, how crazy do I look? Okay, I don't find my shelves very interesting, but that's because I look at them all day, every day. Like I literally just sit on my bed and look at my shelf. So I don't know how interesting this is for you. I don't, I think it's really boring. I don't like bookshelf videos where they like, they pull every book out and they like show you every book. <laughs> Here's the tea. God forbid, can you imagine how long that would take us? Absolutely not. So you can just look at the spines. I'll pull a few out, particularly on this shelf. But yeah, I, I don't find it particularly interesting. But I guess it is interesting for you because I don't show you them that often, you know? Anyways, next shelf. <laughs> So this shelf began when I first did this bookshelf re reorganization. It started off as my favorite fantasy hardcovers. We had a lot of books face out on the shelf. I think like the Starless Sea was face out. Babel maybe was face out. And then I ended up getting these special editions, which I'll show you in a second. And they were face out for a while, but then it just turned into like spines that I like. <laughs> Cause there's a few on here that arguably aren't favorites. And also I just want to recognize there did not used to be this many things on this shelf. These just all used to be on different shelves and I had to move them here because there's nowhere else else for them to go. We've got Lil Wooloo, we've got my favourite candles. Anyways, here we have all of my Lee Bardugo books that I've got in hardcover and I take all of the dust jackets off because I really like how they all look with the foil. King of Scars, that one's really nice actually. Rule of Wolves I think has a nice one as well. Yeah, look at that. We love that. So that's where all of those go. Then we 
have my special editions of the Barry the Nightingale trilogy. So that is the first one, the Barry the Nightingale. Then we have the girl in the tower. And then we have the winter of the witch. I may actually be reading, um, hello, <laughs> a new Catherine Arden right now. Guys, moving on. <laughs> Then I just added this one here, actually. I added my special edition of the Song of Achilles, which is a beautiful edition. It's so, so gorgeous. It's got lovely end pages as well. So I just ended that here because I moved Legends and Latte so that these would all be like the same size hardcovers. We've got the Poppy War Trilogy. Tress of the Emerald Sea is a recent favorite. So a lot of these are favorites. It's basically favorite hardcovers, <laughs> plus special editions, plus Lee Bardugo books. <laughs> And then we have my favorite Erin Morgansons. Oh, one day Erin Morgansons gonna write another book and won't we be blessed. This was one of my first special editions. Oh, before I really knew what special editions were. I didn't even know that the Night Circus existed at this point. And I just remember I read, this is when I was first getting into reading and I read the description for the Starless Sea and I was just like enamored by it. I just love this. This is like a special book for me because it's one of the first special editions I ever got. And I remember there were three different covers of the heart cover and this was my favorite one I pre-ordered it and I was so worried about which one I was gonna get but I got my favorite one so it's I love that cover and then we have Babel and the Once and Future Witches so a few more of my favorites so I do like that shelf there's a lot of like lovely books on this shelf it brings me joy <laughs> okay still on fantasy this stretch here is more hardcovers and special editions of stuff but maybe not my favorite sorry about all the fake foliage again this stuff used to be more scattered out but uh <laughs> It goes where it fits now. So we've got two in the Renegade series by Marissa Mayer, but Renegades is up there alone because I <laughs> have the favorite back of it. We have Her Majesty's Royal Coven. We have the two in the Diviner series I have in hardbacks because the other two in paperbacks are sent. I told you, basically series go together unless I have different sizes and then they get separated because I often, I have a lot of sections that are done by sizes. Now, yes, I could move them out now because I could put these down here and like, have other hardcovers in here, but I just like them there. So that's where they go. We have the Girls of Paper and Fire series. We have the Raven and the Monarchs trilogy. We have Cersei, A River and Chance by Rebecca Ross. And then this is uh, Daughter of the Moon Goddess and what even this Heart of the Sun Warrior or something like that. I can't even remember the title. I read Daughter of the Moon Goddess and I didn't like it. And I'd already bought the special edition of this book, which I'm not gonna read. This is one of the only books on my shelf that I have not read and refuse to do so. But I still think they are some of the most gorgeous books that I own, particularly the, the sprayed edges. I adore the sprayed edges for these books. So they just go sprayed edges face out and we kind of just view them as like a little art installation <laughs> rather than books I enjoy. If you didn't, it wasn't something to be liked. It was something to be understood from an academic perspective. Well, they... Obviously you're not an academic. No. And then we have a stack of some books here. We have the whole Wayward Children series here, which I love. I just moved Legends and lattes and bookshops and bone dust here so they could be together where's some alexi harrow some t kingfisher so that is our shelf let's get into the final fantasy shelf and this is the final fantasy shelf and this one is kind of just like a hodgepodge <laughs> of different books we have another stack of i like st stacking these like smaller hardbacks together so we've got like middle game vengeful song of race and ruin we've got some kate and crims that go together so i like stacking books of similar sizes together we've got oh, the invisible life of Addie larue is like the love i love the books this because it's got like a very slight gold shimmer it's so pretty that's like one of probably my most like easily recommendable books but um yeah, I don't know if there's many standouts here, to be honest. <laughs> the shelf is kind of like everything else of my fantasy that doesn't necessarily go on one. Well, some of these could go because like these could go on the top shelf. It just ends up being what ended up being there. You get what I mean? But um, fantasy shelf, look at these fantasy books. Some of these I didn't enjoy. Maybe I should unhaul them, but I'm not good at unhauling. I know some people just keep their favorite books and like, I don't want to do that, but maybe one day I'll have to. <laughs> And then this is actually a mix of two different genres. The first half here is all magical realism. Books are classed magical realism or fabulism or surrealism or anything like that. So a recent favorite here is Shark Heart by Emily Herbeck. I actually have quite a few favorites in here like You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno as well. These books are not coming out easily. You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno or Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. I need more like magical realism-y wrecks. And then also we have some A.S. King, one of my favorite fabulism authors. And then this half 
is sci-fi. So Project Hail Mary is definitely a favorite sci-fi for me. I love it. I love Project Hail Mary. I love Andy Weir. There's a few great ones in the stack here, like this series by Suve Novell, The Illuminae Files is a series I absolutely adore. But yeah, so I don't have a lot of magical realism or sci-fi, so I'm always looking for more recommendations if you guys have any. I don't read a ton, I do just tend to read more like traditional fantasy. I mean, some of my books skirt the line between whether I shelve them as fantasy or magical realism. But um, yes, they share this, they share this shelf because I don't read a ton of either of them. So it's time to start the mystery thriller shelves. My mystery books and thriller books are mixed in with each other. I don't have like a mystery section and a thriller section. I think when I redo my shelves, I will separate them, but it's like too far gone right now <laughs> to fix them. Also, I don't think I'm gonna be getting as many books out of this section because we have a lot more that are stacked up with one another. Um, but up here are some of my favorite hardcovers. Well, not some of my favorites. This, well, some of them are my favorites. <laughs> I have a lot of my mysteries up here, so I of course have, oh my god, get out of here. Security, can you please escort this lady over here out? We have the Thursday Murder Club series, aka the best series in the world ever known to man. Oh. Oh, teach me for getting a book out. Oh my god. <laughs> but these are just a lot of my newer release hardcovers. So we've got some Ruth Wares, we've got some Riley Sager. I then also have my Janice Hallett over here, Mysterious Case, The Appent Angels, and The Twyfer Code. The appeal is down here separate. The thing is, I love a lot of my mystery covers. I used to have so many face outs. That's the thing I really miss about having space, is having face outs on my shelf and just shelving them in a less like condensed cluttered way so I could like show I miss showcasing my favorite so that's something I'm definitely hoping to have space to do so in the future okay next shelf one thing to note is that this is a full shelf this shelf like um the fantasy one but it's half covered by my half shelf just because of how they fit in together I couldn't put this full shelf on the other wall because that would like kind of make more sense I guess so there's a lot of books hiding behind this half <laughs> <laughs> like back here where you can't see there's so many books back there dear my oh my god it's like it's <laughs> this is what i'm saying guys it's a mess It's a mess. So on this shelf, I have some of my Agatha Christie special editions that I've read. I absolutely adore these. I want to collect every single one that's ever been made. The ones I have here are Murder on the Orient Express, um, Midwinter Murder, and Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. I feel like I've read more of the special editions, but maybe I haven't. I know I own more. I own the ABC Murders. I own... There's actually quite a few that I own, but maybe these are only three I read, but I absolutely love them. I want to collect all of them and then we just have a few miscellaneous books and then we have the section where i just alternated it between red and black until then i don't <laughs> it used to be alternated but then like certain books got subbed out um so we've got some of my favorite courtney summers up here we've got sadie by courtney summers and the project by courtney summers i love the covers oh my god I love Courtney Summers books. Also, I didn't love The Appeal by Janice Hallett, but I did buy this special edition of The Appeal because I love it. I just love how it looks. <laughs> they released this, like, originally The Appeal only came out in paperback. They released this after, but I just, I love it. So I do like that edition. Next shelf, they are packed in, baby. <laughs> So I have three in the Trudio Devia series here. I need to continue on with the series. I don't own any more that have come out. This is like the original trilogy. And then there's more. By the way, please excuse any slights you've seen of my injury. I grated myself yesterday while I was grating cheese. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Gross. Yeah, the thing with this series is I have them all in paperbacks, obviously. And the paperback is one of those series where the paperback doesn't come out until the year after. Like, always on the dot. And by then, I'm just excited for, like that year's new releases so i never end up buying the continuation of the series but i do want to continue then we just have like some red books up here i like grouping by color <laughs> we have some red books um so we have the last we have two sashio camisos finley donovan is killing it is put separately to finley donovan knocks him dead partly because of the color but predominantly because i got like a 
big paperback of Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead for like no reason, don't understand why. <laughs> we got the Good Girls Guide to Murder series, Marlowe Murder Club, The George Moth. Then we used to have Strange Case, The Alchemist Daughter Face Out and it makes me very sad that we no longer do. <laughs> but there is that series. And then this used to be like a blue stack, like it used to be all blue. And then we seem to have added in some oranges. <laughs> really know how that happened. But here are all my paperback Agatha Christie's that I own. I don't own the first couple Poirot's just because I read them only audio. So these are the paperback Ag Agatha Christie's that I own. We've got some Sherry Lapinas which always seem to look exactly the same. <laughs> so I like them to be together. Um, yeah, this was blue until some orange got added in. <laughs> This shelf, more mystery thrillers, baby. We've got one more shelf undone. It's just more mystery thrillers. Here we have some pink books. <laughs> I group bit books with a little bit of pink together because, again, we like grouping by colour. And it, literally, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason. I don't know what to say to you. There's no reason that these are shelved as they are. Then we just have more mystery thrillers. Oh, this one was because, again, it was colour. It was fading from black to blue to white. Um, that doesn't make no sense. I feel like the, the the red text here throws it off a little bit, but that was the idea. So again, that's why the clock, mystery of the clockwork sparrow and the mystery of the Jordan Moth are shelved separately. Again, when I redo my shelves, I probably will put them together. And then we have some more um, hardbacks that I love. So we've got Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Ginny McAllister. And we got the first two in the three Dahlias. I can't hold these with one hand, but like the camera's at an angle. I told you this be chaotic. I I can't get both hands in. There we go. But now it's not in focus. I need a hand to focus it. Oh, moving on. This shelf, this bookshelf, I just feel like it's cursing me. And this is our final mystery thriller shelf. Whoa, can you believe it? Standouts here, probably the writing retreat. This is like packed in. I'm not getting this out. Like, I... <laughs> I can't even get it out. We have a few more Riley Sagers here. My prized possession here is probably my Lady Hardcastle mysteries over here. I just love them. The thing with this series is though they're all different heights. <laughs> they keep switching how tall the books are and it's really upsetting me. <laughs> so they look a bit messy because they're like 10,000 different heights. <laughs> but um, yes. Oh no, we have Mystery of the Blue Train down here, one of the special editions. How did that end up down there? Why is that there? I don't know. <laughs> But it's saying there because I can't, I don't have any room to put it on the shelf with the rest of them up above. So I guess it's a use of space. <laughs> Sorry guys, these are not beautiful, beautiful shelves. They're not gorgeous, gorgeous gowns. They're messy, messy, messy. <laughs> Okay, and then we get on to some of my littler mini, this is my half shelf. So these are my genres and my half shelf. Some of these are okay, some of them are the worst <laughs> out of the lot. <laughs> so this is my contemporary bookshelf. This is double stacked. So here's Yampa, everyone say hi. Um, there's like a whole, there's a whole load of books behind here. <laughs> and there's books, oh God, behind there as well. There's books everywhere. There's too many books. <laughs> What was that? Okay, James. I love the Elizabeth Asveda books. We've got Traveling Cat Chronicles. These, the ones at the front, are just the ones I've read more recently. So, like, I do love my edition of Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow. Even though it was like a four star for me, I didn't quite get the like complete hype of this. I do love that edition. Like, it's gorgeous. But yes, don't know how interesting that is because. It's a mess. Moving on. <laughs> We're just immortalizing these shelves together, guys. This is like a funeral for them before I kill them in, well, it could be a year. How am I, a serious moment, everyone. Sorry, this is gonna be really zoomed in. Whoa! <laughs> serious moment? I could be living here for another year. Like, moving takes a long time. We haven't begun the process yet. We're about to begin the process. I got like, I, my accounts are finally ready for us to begin the process within the next couple of weeks or months, but like, that takes time. I could be here for another year. I could be here for another year. Of course, I love my family. The, the only reason I want to move out so fast is these fucking books. Where am I putting books when I read them? Where am I putting books when I read them? Then we move on to the romance shelf. Again, there's like 10,000 books behind. <laughs> Who knows what's behind here? But we've got the most important ones facing out. We've got my Ali Hazelwoods. Well, we've got all five of my Ali Hazelwoods. The Upper Brenner by Nina LaCour. This is like an underrated one. Oh my God, this whole shelf is shaking. Uh, this is an 
underrated book, I think. I really, really enjoyed this. It's more of like a literary romance, more than less of a genre romance, but I do, I did really enjoy it. We have my Talia Hibberts, we have my Abby Jimenez, and we have Emily Henry, Chris Maldonado. These are basically the standouts. I think Honey Girls only, I liked Honey Girl. I read it like three years ago though. <laughs> I think it's only survived because it's quite small. <laughs> And so when I'm making economical space decisions, it manages to survive. Next we have graphic novels, baby! This one's actually doing okay. Well, it's only just gone fill, like full in its like original format. I haven't had to like do any shenagling yet. <laughs> That's not even a word. Because it's a bit more of a taller shelf than some of the others. Oh, I need to like move you a bit because I can't. <laughs> get to the shelf. So yeah, obviously we have a lot of favourites in here. We have the Heartstopper series. Oh my god, look at them. They're so gorgeous. We have the... Oh, no. <laughs> we have the Sheets Graphic Novel series and we have the Tea Dragon bags. And I like having these like face out like this, you know, on the side. Well, one of them, I guess. And Tea Dragon Society's at the back there. I don't know if you can see it. But when I'm looking at my shelves, come over here. Can you see that back there? It looks like it's really hidden, but when I'm looking at my shelves, it's actually like a really nice backdrop to the shelves. Anyways, I'm doing so good at showing you this. I've just given up because I know the shelf we're about to approach and it's the worst. It's the worst offender. It's my arch nemesis. <laughs> Last three shelves are pretty bad actually. This is horror, okay? This is horror. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, this is horror. <laughs> When I made my shelves, I don't think I really read a lot of horror, and um, I now do. And that I cannot tell you how many books are back here. Like I don't. I mean, there's just so many back there. It's a mess, guys. It's oh no, oh no, it's all going wrong. So yeah, now I read a lot of horror. So this horror shelf kind of just ends up being like what I've read recently. So yeah, I've read a lot of horror now. So I mean, there's just so many books back there. <laughs> And so many, I had to move a lot of horror to like behind the mystery thriller shelf. So like, we've got some of my recent favourites, like uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism, Our Wives Under the Sea, Come For Me With Apples, The Weight of Blood. Like it ends up being quite a lot of ones I've read recently, but I cannot tell you how many, like horror is my arch nemesis. Like trying to figure out what horror books are going to be on display, what ones, are, I mean, there's no room at the back of this anymore. This is like quadruple sextuple stacks. <laughs> the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist! And a lot of them have come on these shelves behind the mystery thriller books. It's a mess. Oh my god, I read way too much horror now, so I definitely need a much bigger horror section because I used to read none and now I read quite a lot. Then here we have my historical fiction slash there's some classics in here with Jane Austen Burke's shelf. Again, again, again. This one is, is hard for me to decide what books to go on show because there's 10,000 books that I like in the back! <laughs> But I think my priorities are all of my Taylor Jenkins read books being together and my Jane Austen's, you know. The rest, I mean, what is even back there? I don't even know at this point. <laughs> I, when I when I move and like maybe I'll have to do like a big unhaul maybe there will be some books that I'll want to get rid of and then I think we're just gonna go handheld now because this shelf down here is so low I can't use a tripod this is the non-fiction shelf look at this what is this what is this what is that <laughs> me trying to fit a book onto the non-fiction shelf I pleaded I begged I cried I tried I pushed as hard as I could <sighs> until I couldn't push anymore right um, some of my favourite non-fiction is here. Some of it is probably hiding around the back. No, we love The Five, we love Know My Name, we love Natives, we love Betting the House is a niche political non-fiction that I too much enjoy. Bias, The Anthropocene Reviewed, Becoming by Michelle Obama, All My Forgotten Women books together, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay is one of my favourites. But there's loads of great ones back there, probably, hiding away. <laughs> Oh dear. Let's quickly talk about my TBR as well. So my TBR cart is my main TBR. This is where the books that I'm most excited to read go. And I have mostly hardcovers facing out, but there's a few paperbacks that I'm really excited to read that I allow to face out as well. And then I always put my newest releases at the top. So I think bar 
these two in butts. Everything else on here is a 2024 release. And then the TBR cart has got on all levels paperbacks stacked at the back as well. So there's a few 2024, these are all 2024 releases I think here. And then I have all of my book of the month books that I have not read up there. Also there's a few duplicates. Those first three I have elsewhere on the shelves but then everything else is ones I haven't read and then I don't know if you're ready to see what I'm about to show you <laughs> what is this what is this oh yeah that's all my unread books that don't fit anywhere else I have two full shelves of double stacked three column <laughs> unread books oh, oh my god it's a problem now here is the thing i could if the situation just gets completely untellable i could get another tbr car and just put it in the room next door where we kind of like dump shit <laughs> and move all of these into there and then i get like another shelf but really the fantasy shelf i've only just run out of room on um the mystery for a shelf is pretty bad some of the worst shelves are just horror <laughs> So these two shelves, if I do clear them out, may just end up being like not genre specific, but also not just like hidden away books. So just like a collection of books I have read and like I keep my favourites facing out on the shelves. That could be an option. But I mean, this is a, it, yeah, I have a lot of books I haven't read, guys. The TBR cart is like, oh my god, look, it's so organised. Look at all these lovely books. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we have it guys. That is my whistle stop tour of my bookshelves. And here's the thing, I am joking. I do really enjoy majority of how they look now, like as a cohesive whole, but also they cause me a lot of pain. <laughs> They cause me a lot of pain with trying to figure out where books go now because they are full. They are full to the brim. And I feel like when you make, like when I move out, there's going to be pressure for me to like fill my bookshelves. Like when I'm doing bookshelf reorganization, like the bookshelves to be full. But I don't want to do that. I want to have empty bookshelves. I want to have so many bookshelves that they're sparse. You can see tumbleweed blowing past because then how are you meant to grow? How are you meant to get more books? So... Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my bookshelves as they are. I do love them. They're like a little naughty child. <laughs> That's how I would describe them. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know how your bookshelves going. Are they, have you got loads of space? Are you really happy with how they look? Are you need to organize them a bit more? Are you running out of space like I am? Let me know down below and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.